So the bottom side of the head where we thought the gasket was bad is right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In there, right there. And I believe you can see some rust starting right there. So definitely quite confident that's where it was squeaking through. Um, we're going to get the head decked anyways, but the way it looks, may have quit soon enough. Like I might not have to, but going to deck it and put in some fire rings. Keep that from happening again. So other than that, the rest of these look good, but that one spot there, pretty confident that that's where it's at. Um, a lot of time when I did my Ford problem got solved but I never it was really bad actually you could just hear it singing a song as you were driving down the road just squeaking out the the relief valve or relief valve in the reservoir cap but it there was nothing visible so this one here quite confident that that's where it was leaking but we'll deck the heads new gaskets head studs on oh, when they're decking it they're doing the the stainless fire rings in there and we'll tear off the other side. Here, pull this little bracket off. This is the driver's side. Pull this little bracket off. Got this little bracket here that I need to weld, so I'm gonna take it off of there. Got this stud here still. We can leave that in for right now, but we're taking this tap cover off. Next time we go into the city, uh, taking it to a powder coat place, get them powder coated, make them look a little nicer. Yeah, and this side cover's coming off. We've got one more bolt left that's underneath this bracket. And then this side's coming off, so. So, we got this all apart. We taped everything down. It's covered in oil, so the tape won't actually stick to it. It just makes a little loop for it to sit in. And found this here intake bridge, or valve bridge. That piece, the little uh, wear plate on the top fell off and uh, somebody must have had it apart and just adjusted the valve to where it would run and let her rip. No idea how that fell off, but maybe somebody's already had the top end off of this truck and uh, put it in without it because that doesn't make any sense that, that could even fall off of there without pulling the valves or the, the uh, rocker shaft off. So, yeah. That's going to be another little thing to wait on, probably. So, lining up to be awaiting for some stuff before we put this truck back together. Heads are only, say, two to three days. Get them finished, but that part's going to take me longer to order, unless I can get it from GM in a couple of days, but that'll probably be six times as much money as Merchant Auto or somebody like that. So, we'll see how long that takes. But, we've got passenger side over there driver's side over here and it is that one right there so the fourth one up from the back back to the engine here ready to pull this head off I'm gonna be loosening all those head bolts take this head off see what it looks like not expecting too much underneath since I already found what I'm pretty sure is our leak Leaky gasket over there, but we'll see if there's something else too. Oh, both heads are off now, laying on a cardboard box here. Had another spot on this gasket here that looked like could have been blown, so you can see it right there in the head. Like it's rusted right there. Another spot right there. See if I can just focus in on that. Looks like heat could have been going through, so this is more likely actually to be. A worse problem than the other side had. Now maybe it had three spots it was already starting to go, but uh, that or with what I'm seeing in here, somebody's already had this thing apart, so possibly I had a head gasket out on this side. They put a new one in but didn't deck anything, didn't clean it up proper. And then the other side went. I don't know. But also these little bolts here, the little... Uh, you know, Allen's, their little hex drive bolts that hold that are at the top side were just way over tightened. So that really makes me think somebody had this this head off already. Um, probably just threw a new head gasket in there and figured it might survive, but it didn't. So we'll do it right this time and hopefully we get a good truck out of it. Got 
engine sitting there, turbo still on the top. I'm going to pull that off and uh, put um, uh, anti seize in the turbo mount bolts. Someday I hope to do a turbo upgrade on this thing. So when I go to do that, at least the bolts won't be rusted in. Can't afford it right now, but we'll see if it's a good truck, runs good. Maybe someday we'll do that. If not, back to an auction sale. <laughs> Go to the scrapyard. So this is the stock exhaust manifold. This is actually passenger side, but the driver side looks very, very similar. From my uh, 2011 LML. So it's got still the shield on it, but you can see there is no dip in this thing. You guys are telling me that these are restrictive manifolds on some of these Duramaxes, but let's see if I can get that camera in there. Just a beautiful straight path all the way up through. Um, really nice big ports. I think even the performance manifolds that they've got on uh, all the truck parts places, I don't think they're going to be any better unless you go right up to the race manifolds. But you'd have to rev it to 10,000 RPMs before you'd need that much flow. So I think, yeah, these manifolds are in great shape. They're definitely going back on. Got new bolts and new gaskets for them, so might might see if i can ceramic coat them yet would look nicer nobody's ever going to see it though keep in a little more heat but they got good heat shields now yeah, we'll see see what it'll cost taking in the top end there to get the valve covers and the intake powder coated get rid of the rusty aluminum color or the corroded aluminum color so may uh bring these in and see what that'll cost to sandblast and ceramic coat them see how it goes but that's about the end of that duramax looks like such looks like a little a-frame house so yeah time to get the heads sent off to the city and get them started on that that'll take them a few days i gotta order some parts for that push rod over there heads are down here ready to go Order that rocker arm and that one uh, intake bridge, I mean, I didn't say push rod, or I said push rod, didn't mean push rod. And uh, while I'm at that, I got this all wide open. The thing I'm thinking of doing is taking the fuel lines from right there, they're duct taped up, and uh, running them along the frame somewhere, maybe even under the engine mount if I can, if I can find a spot for them to go and uh, just get some swedge lock tubing and my tubing benders and bring that stuff from the transmission straight up over here. Probably scrap those quick connect fittings because they don't need them anymore. Bring it up here somewhere, probably right in behind there. And then um, it could come up here and just tie in right here in the fuel pump. So that's the thought for right now. Oops, knocked the rag out of there. That wasn't stuck in there very good. Have to blame the old lady for that. Uh, so that's the plan. If I can bring that up, there's plenty of room here behind this. Uh, all this stuff here, I just have to uh, set the oil fill tube and the thermostat housing up into place here, just so as I know exactly where that's going to go. But if I do that and run that over here. I would use some of the old fittings and it would have to be some places rubber mounted so the swedge lock could come up and run over and before I could bolt it to the engine I'd have to put some rubber in there so that the engine mounts and stuff like that could still move. But if I did that it would make the driver's side valve cover and valve or injectors and anything like that any of that kind of work that i need to do in the future would be just a really simple as pulling off the wheel tub and maybe the steering shaft out of the way and once that was done you'd be right at it to get to the injectors or glow plugs or anything like that it would just make that a lot simpler so i don't hope to ever have to do it again but i mean injectors someday maybe some 40 over injectors 68 mil um, Duramax tuner, I forget what they call them, 
68 mil in, um, turbo. Away you go. Make some real power. Someday I'll have to change the CP4. It's got lots of miles on it, but uh, we'll see what it looks like when we get the metering valve out. That'll be one of these evening projects. Get that metering valve out and uh, get the Whirly Custom one in there. The Not Whirly. Exergy Performance, they call themselves on that side of things. The Exergy metering valve, stick that in there and uh, look for filings while I'm in there. If there's any filings, then I guess I know I got to do uh, CP4 swap. But yeah, that's how she looks for now. Probably spray some WD on some places if I think it's going to rain again. Been in monsoon season here. We've gotten three inches of rain in the last little while, so I know for some places that's not a lot, but. <laughs> Here, three inches of rain is a lot of rain, so there's crops drowning in places already. But anyway, there she is.